it's like there's two ways of looking at things. You have Muslims that never come to the mosque except through Eid. You can look at that in two ways. You could say that, khalas, these people never come to the mosque and criticize them. Or you could say from a different perspective, at least they're coming to Eid. I would rather them, ha I'd rather them come to Eid than not have any association with Islam whatsoever. At least they're coming to Eid. And our Prophet said that the, the hour won't come until people never say in the earth, no longer say in the earth, Allah, Allah. Right? That, you know, I used to be a because I've had a very privileged, you know, to be around people like this, you know, from the beginning of my Islam, that when I was at UC Berkeley, I was exposed to people, Muslims, that I was like, oh my God, like, I was so shocked. Some of these people, like, I don't know if they've ever said La ilaha Allah once in their lives. And, you know, the blessing of our Lord, you just say La ilaha Allah once in your life, sincerely. Right? Eventually you will be a person of paradise. Right? So that there's two ways of looking at things. And that simultaneously, while we, while we encourage people to follow the Sharia and to give rights, and at times you have to, because if they're taking people's rights and they're cheating, no, you have to come down hard at certain points to warn them and to, from what they're doing. But as you warn them and so forth, is that you never make them despair from Allah's mercy. You know, I would, I would, it's like they asked Sheikh Abu bin Saddam, is that what do you do if you make dhikr and that you never concentrate in your dhikr? And some people might tell you, what's the use of it? Don't make dhikr. Sheikh Abu bin Saddam said, Allah. He said, say, thank Allah Ta'ala that he zayyina jarihatim min jawarihak bi dhikri. He said, thank Allah Ta'ala that he made one of your limbs at least remember him. He said, because even if you're only mentioning Allah with your tongue, that your heedlessness not making dhikr is greater than your heedlessness making dhikr. So in a sense that, yani, obviously that's not the ideal state. The ideal state is to be present with Allah and to have adab and so forth. But there's always two ways of looking at that. So it's, both are true in a sense. But at the end of the day, that um, I just have a lot of compassion for the people of the time. It's very difficult. You know, I had a deep conversation with this, like with Sheikh Faraz, and that we were, we were talking about like how difficult it is for Muslims in, excuse me for mentioning countries, in places like Syria and in Pakistan and in yani India and these, like in other places in Afghanistan to live an upright life and just to, just to not take rushwa and to be in Egypt and to actually have an honest income and not have to pay someone off and not to do something haram to make your business, like it's very difficult. Now Allah Ta'ala will give you a makhraj if you're a person of taqwa, absolutely. But it's hard for people, right? The bureaucracy and the red tape, just to get the simplest thing done, is hard for people. So, I, you have to, I, our time, you have to have a soft spot for people and a deep mercy, while at the same time, principle's principle. You know, so, you know. But what happens is, if people don't have that mercy, and they come down on these people, they push them away further. You know, and that, that, that becomes the difficulty. So, the fine line between, you know, the two is, you know, there's a time and place for everything.